There's some interesting things going on with Carhartt, who wants yeah. to be the new tiller yeah. in Kansas. Tell us what's he happening. He says he's doing God's work, now, by the is, way. Oh, yeah, I know. We saw that. Oh, this um, is Carhartt, the abortionist from uh, Nebraska. Yes. Who was actually working at Tillers. Right. Was a circuit rider with Tiller. And um, now he wants to take over. And, but he's got his own problems that you guys are following. So we've been doing an undercover investigation with him. It's lasted for the past three months. And, uh, and so we went to Carhartt's abortion mill. Well, unbeknownst to him, we've also been gathering information from former clinic workers. And we've got four now, four signed affidavits from former clinic workers. These aren't pro-life activists. You know, they're not marching with signs. They used to work in the abortion clinic. And we've submitted them to the attorney general. And we met with the attorney general, John Bruning from, uh, from Nebraska and demanded two things. Number one, he oversees the, uh, uh, it's called the Nebraska Health and Human Services, which license doctors. And number two, he oversees obviously the criminal uh, aspect of, of the situation. So number one, we're asking him based on these allegations of criminal and substandard of care uh, inside this abortion clinic, that they A, close the clinic and uh, revoke Mr. Carhart's license, but also conduct a thorough criminal investigation and charge Mr. Carhart with crimes. We say, well, what's he doing? Uh, the allegations are, are not limited to, but include hiring in, in Nebraska. You've got to have a nurse, a licensed an LPN, uh, in order to administer intravenous uh, medication or to give injections, begin IVs, injections, or dispense controlled substances, you know, uh, pain medication, morphine, et cetera. He's just taking people off the street. They used to work at a convenience store yesterday. Today they're giving Whoa. injections, uh, Depo-Provera uh, shots. So unlicensed, untrained medical personnel. Uh, so that's clearly criminal activity. Not keeping uh, under lock and key controlled substances, missing drugs. In other words, the, and the allegations of them actually using these drugs inside the clinic. In fact, some of these clinic workers said that uh, Carhartt would come in so high he'd be bumping into walls and, uh, and doing abortions, like falling asleep during the abortions. I mean, you know, horrific things. Uncleanliness uh, inside the abortion clinic, wouldn't change gloves, wouldn't change his schmuck. At the end of the day, he'd be just covered in blood going from one table to and the next. And these are allegations Whoa. being made by employees. N not employees. But why did they come to you? Well, because we put a banner up on our website. We've, we've asked for information. We're, and, and you know what? And he, here's the interesting thing. And this happened with Finkel, too. Once uh, uh, an article came out in the paper saying that an investigation has begun it's against like, Mr. Carhart. Like a water balloon. Exactly. Right. The floodgate opened up. Right. And they said, you know what? We've known about these things for so long, but we didn't know who to contact. We didn't know what to do. And so it, it's like a floodgate. And so more and more people are coming forward with even more outlandish stories. See, see I'm, I'm wondering if somebody who called themselves, quote, pro-choice, has actually wrote, has a romantic, they're kind of roman, what's the word? Romanticized. Romanticizing yes. about what it's all about. And then they actually get involved in it. Yes. And they see the reality. And they see the reality, how gruesome and ugly, and this is going on. John, but I, I think they've been, I think they, 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 their eyes have come open. They've I, been, you hit the nail on the head. I've talked to, as you know, dozens and dozens of former clinic workers. We've right. had them here in this building. Right. And that's very often the case. They had these, this idea that it's, just, it's one thing, and then they get there and they find out it's something else. I'll tell you something, Troy, you ought to have them look at, too, because we've seen this very commonly in abortion, in, in abortion uh, businesses. I'm talking about drugs. The uh, abortionist doesn't want to be tied to the place all the time. He wants to be able to just come in and then leave whenever he wants right. to. And one of the things that they do is they'll take a whole pad of prescriptions, and he'll sign them all. They'll pre-sign them and just leave a, a pad of pre-signed prescription pads. Anybody can fill the thing out for any kind of drug they want. Completely illegal. And that's illegal as the devil, and you can go to prison for that. Yeah. And I'll guarantee you, I, I mean, I have nothing to back this up. I don't know that it's going on with him, but we have seen it time and time again where you have sloppy practices like what you're talking about. They're doing this too. And because they don't, they're not real sloppy in one place, and they say, oh, but I wouldn't do this over here. Right. If you're sloppy, you're sloppy. And so I would, I would have them be looking at asking these employees, did you ever see pre-signed prescription pads laying around? Right. Um, I, I had one clinic employee uh, one day tell me that their abortionist would come in like once a month and just sign two or three prescription pads. And she said, I could go into the supply closet and there's some prescription pads piled up in there. Right. That I could just pull one off, I could fill out anything I want and go to the, go to the pharmacy and get it. And uh, nobody knows any different. Well, you know, uh, Another thing we're finding out with, from the abortion cartel is that they love abortion so much 
and this happened with Tiller. They love abortion so much, they don't care how it's done, who does it, right. or the conditions in, the under which it's done. Right. So Carhartt's up there. He wants to become the next national hero, and he loves the limelight, and he, and he enjoys the pro-abortion accolades. But you just dig just a microcosm below the surface, and you find out that this guy is sloppy, malpractice lawsuits and allegations, um, disgustingly filthy, um, just a substandard human being. But wait a minute. Does he do nine-month ones like Tiller did? He'll do them at any age for any price. But let me tell you something, Troy. What you're describing there, I don't think is unusual at all. That's the point the that we industry. continue to make. Is it? This isn't an anomaly. In right. fact, it is the standard of care that everybody gets. In fact. I went to Nebraska. I went to this abortion clinic. It's it's located inside an ex car garage. In fact, in the no, in the brick, the brick Whoa. is actually has this old like uh, like Model A embedded into right. the brick with the black bricks juxtaposed to red bricks. The roof is leaking. The siding is coming off. I bet there isn't a quart of paint on the entire building. It's in a car garage. Next door to it is a, a, a healthcare clinic that's run by like a crisis pregnancy center, a women's health care clinic, that was built as a doctor's office that's staffed by physicians and nurses. That's real health care. This place, I mean, you talk about back alley, it's a car garage.